Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Friday's edition of the Bridging Impact Podcast, Coach's Corner, where I, Coach Furtado, share the wisdom that I am learning from my week. And this week, I chose to share wisdom from the one and only Shoe Dog. Who is the author of Shoe Dog? Mr. Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. And Shoe Dog's about the, the story of Nike, and that's what's really inspiring this episode because... You know, I went to the University of Oregon, so I have, like, kind of that extra connection. Of course, you know, I was an athlete growing up, right? Everyone wants, you know, the custom Nikes. I remember customizing, you know, custom, I think it was, like, custom jersey. Not a jersey, but, um, like, a, a warm-up, you know, in, in middle school. And, you know, you always want the new Nike shoes for basketball, right? Like, you know, there's other brands, you know, Under Armour, Adidas, and... You know, they have some, uh, they have some great stuff too, but it's just like, there's something about Nike that just separates themselves from other people. And the story actually of it is really inspiring. And I really want to, you know, encourage you to go and listen to it or, or read it, you know, you read it or listen to it, actually read, listen to the books as well. So it's one of those stories that, you know, really reminds you, especially as an entrepreneur, right? I'm creating bridging impact into, I want this to be my full-time income and I'm working on how I can do that with uh, the business side of basketball. And it's really interesting because it starts and it goes by year and I'm not even done with the book. I think I'm like 200 out of like 350 pages in. So I'm a little over halfway. I literally just got to the point of where they came up with the name Nike. And it's a really funny story because it's about like, honestly, seven to eight years in to Nike, right? They started at, as Blue Ribbon Sports. And I think this is a really good reminder for entrepreneurs like myself and, and maybe even people like you, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, that, you know, really, you know, creative projects like Nike or, you know, I don't want to compare Bridging Impact to Nike, but it's a creative project where I'm kind of building it from, you know, like Bridging Impact didn't exist before. Right. It takes a lot of time and effort and obstacles and challenges and, and definitely a lot of luck as well. There's a lot of luck, but I do believe that you create your own luck. The more you kind of put yourself out there and, and put your brand out there, whatever you're building and creating. And I think one of the most inspiring things about it is Phil Knight actually went on this journey, you know, after he finished college and school and like one of the first years is, um, you know, he went from like, Japan to like, I'm going to butcher some of the, the countries, but like Bangladesh, he went to Greece and Greece is actually, it's kind of interesting, you know, cause he, his ability to tell stories, right. In like, you know, one of the first chapters, he talks about like going to Greece and seeing the, the goddess of, of victory, uh, which is Nike. Right. And, you know, did not, not really thinking anything of it when, um, you know, creating his, his sports company because he named the sports company Blue Ribbon Sports because he just literally had like medals that were like had blue ribbons on it from his track days. So it's really interesting that Phil chose that and, and how, you know, Waddell, one of, um, you know, his his employees at the time, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to butcher what his direct role is, but he was, you know, pretty up there and he was, you know, a man who was always working super hard, but he's actually disabled. He was actually in a, in a wheelchair and brought this idea of, okay, you know, we got one last minute submission because they were trying to figure out, okay, what name should we put on, you know, this shoe? And it's just like, you know, for whatever reason, you know, this came to me in the middle of the night, Nike. And, and Phil didn't even like it. He wanted to name it Falcon Sticks. And everyone on the team was like, no, do not name it Falcon Sticks. That's a terrible idea. And so it's really interesting, you know, how that name came about. It was kind of random. It wasn't like Phil was like, Nike is the way, you know, like he, he was like, that seed was planted in him, you know, I think it was like seven, eight years, you know, before, you know, when he was traveling around the world and, and that was like a big deal back then. So I think there's some luck in that, that he was traveling around the world and doing that. And, you know, so I really believe that. There will probably be seeds planted this year for things and projects for myself and, and, and yourself, you know, that, that may come across in like three to five, 10 years. And it kind of comes in full circle and in full mode. And um, I think another, you know, really big takeaway I'm taking away from this in the first half of this book is really 
you know, when you have something that you want to share with the world, whether it's a bridging impact or another brand that you are creating, you have to take that leap and that step forward to push yourself out of your comfort zone. And one of the things is I just recently joined a sports accelerator program to learn about like the business side of starting, you know, a, a sports business in terms of like training, training kids, you know, for basketball and leadership. And they, they do all sorts of types of sports, but I needed to take that little like leap of faith. Okay. Let's, let's invest some time and some money into this, you know, project, this, this course, this community that I can really start improving my ability to be a business owner. Right. Because if I want to make this a, a full time successful business, yes, I, number one, I'm a good coach and that's my God given abilities. I feel a responsibility to give to the next generation what I was given as, as a young athlete. However, when you're running a business, you have to understand there's a, a lot of things that go behind it. It doesn't matter if you're just a great coach, you have to be really great at sales and marketing. You got to be good at accounting, making sure your numbers are right. And those are a lot of things that, you know, I not. I'm not great at yet. And, and that's the important word I, I want to get across is yet. Right. I think a lot of times we choose not to, you know, pursue things like that we are interested in because we are not good at it yet. And it takes a lot of time. It's just like sports. Right. So for me, you know, for some of us, for some of you that are, that are listening to this, you know, that I'm trying to grow on YouTube and I have been improving on YouTube. Right. And it's the same thing as when you're picking up a sport. Some people are naturally going to have a higher ceiling at YouTube just because of their personalities and that's reality. But that doesn't mean that you can't continue to improve on and, and show your style. And, you know, YouTube is, again, it's like basketball. You gotta be in, in the weight room, you know, whether you're learning and watching other YouTube videos and learning how to do it, you have to understand how can I, you know, be a better YouTuber, right? Be a better better basketball player. And then, you know, one of the best things that I talk about, I talk to young athletes is you have to, you know, consistently play all the time. You have to consistently make sure that you are pushing yourself. And it's the same thing for YouTube. If you're doing the same thing all the time, then you're not going to, you know, push yourself and grow at, at least not as much. And that's a big thing for athletics. And then obviously for bridging impact, right? If I'm doing the same thing all the time and, and, it's kind of interesting because you have to make choices about how you, you spend your time when you're kind of an entrepreneur. And, you know, I got to figure out, like, I, I actually genuinely ask myself, I'm like, okay, with Coach's Corner, what exactly is the purpose of this, right? Not necessarily like it's purposeless, but like my time is so valuable. But I really come across that, like, I really enjoy sharing the wisdom and I, it helps me. Not only does it help me, like, internalize and understand ideas better because I'm, I have to be able to succinctly, you know, communicate that with them. It, it is helping me become a better communicator. And I'm really hoping that it brings, you know, people value that are listening to it and either inspires them or gives them, you know, some sort of wisdom that they can take and bring into their own lives because I have other people that are doing that for me. And I want to be a source for that for other people as well. And just really taking advantage of that opportunity. And so, you know, with Shoe Dog, right, we just have to make sure that, you know, I love the saying, and it's kind of, it's really an interesting saying, and I've been kind of like trying to grapple with it is just literally just to just do it and know that we are not good at it yet. But if we keep taking, you know, strides forward and really, you know, trying to continue to do our best, that's all we, that's all we can ask, right? Like we only get, you know, one life is cheesy, but like, do you want to, you know, end up, you know, when you're, wh wh however, whatever age you are and like, look back and be like, Hey, did I pursue what I, you know, really what my heart was singing me, what, what I feel like the universe put me here for, or, or did I play it safe? And, you know, it's, it's, it's a journey too, right? Like for me, I know the full-time income isn't going to come in the next few months. It's going to be a couple, it's a couple, couple year process, more than a couple year process. And, and I'm willing to do that. And I, I'm fortunate to be in a situation where I feel comfortable to do that. Not everyone can. Um, and so sometimes it's not about, you know, necessarily taking your, you know, whether it's a creative vision or your, you know, your project, you know, it could be just taking up snowboarding or something, just doing something that you want to pursue and giving a little bit of time. Um, so even if you did 15 minutes at a time, you know, every single day, 15 minutes times, you know, 365, I'm not gonna be able to do that math um, off the top of my head, but that's how much time you would be putting in and it, and it grows over time and you, you'll, you'll continue to take those steps forward. So just, just do it. 
That's my message to you for this week. I appreciate everyone for giving this uh, episode a watch and a listen. Um, if this resonated with you, please share it with a friend. That's how we grow. We want to make sure that you're leaving your impact on the court. That's our responsibility. That's the purpose of our podcast, you know, the Coach's Corner and our interview podcast. We want you to inter- leave every little bit of impact on the floor, on the world that you can. So make sure that you're sharing this with a friend, comment, let me know what you are taking a leap of faith on and how you are just doing it this week. I will be in your eyes and ears next week. Coach Furtado out.